Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to talk about this NuGet package that I came across called Coravel. And I found it to be extremely interesting and uh, very easy to use. So as the description says, it's a zero config .NET Core library that makes task scheduling, caching, queuing, mailing, even broadcasting easier or a breeze. Now today I'm going to focus only on task scheduling and maybe I'll go into the caching, queuing and other things in later videos. Task scheduling was very interesting because I'm used to using Hangfire, which is a very handy framework, but it can be quite complex sometimes uh, just because you'll have to write a lot of code. The things that Corval do not support and which we should be aware of is database-based scheduling, meaning in Hangfire, we can use a backend storage, for example, a cache or DB for keeping the schedule, which helps during a distributed system where you want to have multiple processes using caching. Uh, and this is something is not available in Coravel. But in my experience, I have so far not used the database-based scheduling at all. I have been mostly using a single container which is taking care of scheduling and I don't have to use any of the database-based features of Hangfire. So on those cases, Coravel is going to be very helpful and very simple. So let's start with a very simple example of running this. Now you can use the standard main method and create a scheduler, but in most cases, I won't say in most cases, I think in every single case, what we do is we use the Microsoft hosting framework to create a application builder and then run the host from that. And I'm going to use that because that is because that is what the standard practice is. So let's start with creating a builder first. So our builder equal to, so I can use this Microsoft dot extension dot hosting dot host. So that host, and then I'm going to create an application builder. So dot, so create application builder of the arguments. Now for the configure services, I'm not going to use the method. I'm just going to use create host builder. And then I will use the add scheduler extension method that is provided by Coravel. So I'll say builder dot services dot add scheduler and you can see that the add scheduler is part of the Coravel namespace so I'll add the scheduler and here it has added the Coravel namespace and then I'm going to create a host out of the builder using the build method so I can say var host equal to builder dot build and here I can schedule a service. So there are a couple of ways of scheduling the service. I'm going to show the inline one first, then we are going to use a class for scheduling. I can also use host.run because that's the last method I'll create. And here, as soon as I do that, you can see that it's already suggesting a code for me. So here, instead of using this method, I can use a different one, but let me just accept the suggested code. I don't have an email sender. So here, instead of that, I can use the inline scheduler. So I can say schedule. And here will be my scheduler. And for the scheduler, I can just use console console.write line hello or 
will schedule and here instead of running every minute I'm going to run every second so that dot oh, I have to close this out okay. and now I can say every you can see every 15 minutes every minute every five minutes every 15 second every then every five seconds every second and every seconds can take number of seconds every minute can take number of minutes and so on and so forth so there's a lot of option we are going to go with every second and that's pretty much it uh, i'm using a wait let me get rid of the await because i do not have anything function internally and let's fix this Okay, now if I run this, every second is going to print out hello, Coravel schedule. So let me run this. And you can see here, every second it is printing out hello, Coravel service. Now, if you have seen the video of Hangfire, which I'm going to share in the description. You can see that configuring Hamfire might take a little bit more involved in terms of coding. So here we can use it something very easy. So now let's create a class for scheduling instead of inline scheduling because that will be the real time scenario how we are going to do this. So let me stop this. And then let's come here. Let's create a couple of classes because I want to also show how we can do dependency injection. To go here, create a class. Let's name it as printer. And here, public void print. Hello, scrollable schedule. And let's create extract an interface for this one. So we have an iPrinter. And next, we are going to create the class for actual scheduling. And the scheduling class is for Coravel needs to implement an interface called I invocable. So here we're going to say printer invocable. So we're going to create a printer invocable class and it's going to implement the I invocable from Corable. So you can see it added the namespace called Corable.invocable. Let me get rid of the namespaces which are not needed. And here we are going to implement the namespace. And in this place what I want to do is I want to create a constructor and I want to inject the I printer. So I'll use the default constructor method to inject and in this case I can use printer.print and uh, then I can say return task.completed task just so that the interface is um, taken care of in terms of returning a task. So I'm just returning a completed task. Ideally, if we have an async function, then we don't have to worry. We just make it as a sync and just await on that. But for us, we do not have any awaitable function. So I'm going to do that. I will probably update the code to show how it will work with await a little bit later. But this is where we create the invocable. And now here, we just go ahead and here. We can say printer invocable, and then of course we will have to as builder dot service i printer. I am adding it as transient. You can use it as transient or and here what is the so just add the dependency injection namespace. And now at this point, if we run this, 
we should be seeing hello coraval schedule happening every second as expected so as you can see it was fairly simple to do it and we could use the dependency injection just like we do for any other application there is nothing special that we had to do for this so now if we have to go into the printer and make this an async function we can shift task async and here we can say task dot delay of a second and then we can go into the printer and instead of that we can say task that should be it task print and then we do a await and change it to 50 millisecond instead nothing much we're doing let's run this wait and then i will because i made it await i'm going to go back to this one and i'm going to make it as await and here i can click this as a sync and i don't need this return statement anymore and now if i run i'm going to see the exact same behavior which is every second it is going to print the hello schedule now of course this has even this is the standard feature and i think this is what can be used in almost every scenario so apart from that it has few other features that we can use which are very handy one of them is i like this is just showing like a daily schedule so you want to run it on thursday saturday and what not but this is one feature which is very important which is prevent overlapping so if the event has not completed the last time it was involved and due again it will prevent it from running so this is this is a very in my opinion very important feature and we can give a unique identifier for this particular one so we'll do it this way and for us it's not going to make any difference because it's going to still keep running the way it is um, because we are not creating an overlapping but if we go ahead and here we'll do a await task dot delay of five second and run and now you can see that it did the hello coraval but it's not printing the next one until this is done so it is waiting for five seconds instead of printing every second though the schedule is every second but it is waiting for the last one to be over this is a very important feature because sometimes this causes so much of pain when we are writing code so this is a very simple introduction to coraval there are a lot of other feature i'm planning to cover few of them as i go and use it uh, disclaimer i'm not using coraval yet in any production solution uh, but i definitely intend to use it because it's extremely simple and easy to use so i'm going to keep you posted when i use it but um, in my next video i'll cover some more features of coraval so that's all I wanted to cover for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.